why isn't he texting me back? This is a question that women constantly ask. I don't know what guys are saying, but I talk to my female friends and I see the posts on Facebook. I had a date with this guy, it went great. I never heard back from him. You know, I texted him. It's been a couple days, what's up? I've been on that side many, many times. Why doesn't he text back? Or initially he'll text back frequently and then he'll drop off. And I'm always, I'm gonna come down to one thing. When a man doesn't reply promptly, he's just not interested. It's that simple. He's just not feeling in touch with his interests. In the same way that a woman may not feel in touch with her desire to fuck a guy. How often times have you gone on a date with a guy, ladies, and of course he wants sex with you. That's just a natural desire that men have due to their testosterone, and you're not in the mood for sex. You're just not in the mood for sex. He's a nice guy. There's nothing wrong with him. He's taking you to dinner, but you're just not feeling it. In that same way, a man might not be feeling it either to date, to be in a relationship, okay? That's what we have to understand. Now, when um, I'm around men, I'm an escort, men come over here, and then sometime during the end of our appointment, the first thing they'll do, they'll pick up their phone to see what needs to be attended to. Um, or their phone will go off. It's usually a phone call or a text message from work or from a friend. Um, or it could be a woman on a dating app. Maybe they'll be like, okay, I'll, I want to really pay attention to this woman and get back to her. So I'm going to do this as soon as I leave here because I want to give that my full attention. Yeah. And then there's a kind of a smile on their face. But when... When a text message comes in to us, just think about this, when a, when a text message comes in, there are different ways of feeling about it. There's a feeling that comes up when a text message comes in, you know, whether it's from a, an appointment reminder from a doctor's office, you know, maybe a relative texting you or a friend texting you or one of your children or a parent or work. There's an initial feeling and that feeling isn't rational. It's just like, ooh, I'm glad this came in. I want to reply. I want to interact with this message, you know, or eh, I don't not really want to interact with this person, so I'm not going to interact. There's a feeling that comes up. And the, if the feeling that comes up when someone texts me, uh, it's like, ooh, I'm so excited to hear from you. I'll get back to that person right away. Or if it's like one of my kids, I'll get back to that person right away. But if it's someone I'm not that excited about hearing from, I might wait a while to get back to that person. Or I might feel like I don't want to talk to that person. I really should reply to that person. Let them know I'm not interested. But I don't even feel... I don't feel anything. I don't feel called on to reply. Just in the same way that ladies, you don't feel called on to open your legs for this guy or hold this guy close or kiss him. It's just a feeling. The part that we have to keep in mind though is that when it comes to dating situations and relationships, we have to bring our empathy online and we have to bring our um, adult self online. like. I realize I'm, I'm aware, we have to be a little bit self-aware, I'm aware that I'm not feeling anything, but I, I have a duty to reply to this person and let them know I'm not interested. I don't want to reply to this email, but I need to reply to this email. There has to be a sense of like obligation or responsibility to reply to people, to close things out. And that's what I think a lot of people are missing. I think that they don't have the self-awareness to know that it's a responsible adult behavior to reply, at least reply and say, you know what, I'm just not interested. Or, um, yeah, you contacted me to remind me of this doctor's appointment, but I'm not able to go. So people just don't show up. It's not just in dating, it's in anything. They just don't show up. It's just a matter of like keeping our word, being aware of how we leave people. So in other words, if the guy isn't replying to your text within a few hours or by the end of the day, he's just not that interested. Um, 
most men do have their phone near them. They know when their phones go off and they check their phones. I know they check their phones because I'm around men often. They do check their phones and they will get back immediately to something that's urgent to them, whether it's work or whether it's a friend. So unless you're dealing with the rare guy who puts his phone away for the whole day, and I think if he's interested in a woman, he's going to have it turned on. If he's the rare guy that puts his phone away for the whole day, there should still be some... Um... Okay, the other thing that a guy will do if he's interested in you, besides get back really promptly to your texts, within a few hours usually, he will be making efforts to see you. His, his texting won't be about how your day is going. His texting will be about when can I see you. Okay, if these two things are not happening, he's just not interested. And that's okay. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It's like, um, imagine all the dogs at the Humane Society and you go in to look for a dog. There's nothing wrong with any of the dogs. They get an owner. Someone wants them, but not but each person walking in isn't going to want every one of those dogs, but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with those dogs. And that's where people have to learn to not take it personally, and that's super hard. You know, it's like going into the Humane Society and you fall in love with this dog, and this dog rejects you. And that's painful. It's definitely painful. Fortunately, dogs don't do that, which is why people like dogs. <laughs> I think people like dogs because they never have to deal with rejection. Dogs are safe and humans are not. So it's really important early on and always constantly to test like, how interested is this person in me? Not, can I get, how can I get this guy to like me is the wrong question. The right question is, how interested is this man in me? How interested is this man in me? And how interested am I in this man? You know, would I drive an hour to see him? Would he drive an hour to see me? You know, like whatever question you have to ask. And these are really, you know, when we're talking about romantic relationships and the feelings and the ways we interact and show up, we're getting into like really deep hidden areas of ourselves where there could be trauma, there could be um, unresolved childhood trauma, abandonment issues, and all that stuff is hidden away and tucked away and it only comes out in dating situations. And that's why those are so painful. That's where the rejection is so painful, so deep, and so inexplicable. Like, why am I in such turmoil? How can I solve this turmoil? And it's all unresolved feelings from childhood. The best I think advice I can give on that is the thing that you're feeling around this person, where did you feel that maybe as a baby from your caregivers and go there? Because if all these things are resolved, we don't obsess over people who don't want us obsessing or wanting someone who doesn't want us or waiting for someone to call us who's not interested. Those are all trauma bonds, in my opinion. They're trauma bonds. Longing for someone who doesn't want us is not a healthy behavior. You know, you look at little children playing on the playground and they'll start to play with each other, you know, and they'll just play. And then one child will be like, no, I don't want to play with you anymore. And the other child will either go off or they'll be hurt, but that hurt is very momentary. It's just for maybe 10 seconds, and then it's passed through and they keep playing. So it's natural for you to have that disappointment, okay? But if that disappointment lingers and lingers and it's causing you pain, 
There's something deeper going on that has nothing to do with that guy. It has to do with your longing for love that's a wound that's activated from your childhood, from how you long from your caregivers, and you may not even remember it. So just to heal it, just imagine that you were a baby wanting to be picked up by your parents. Come out. I'm sure every baby had those moments where they wanted to be picked up by their parents and their parents were busy cooking or had to take care of another child or maybe were alcoholic or depressed or abusive. And that creates a wound. And that wound can be activated again as adults. So you can just heal it that way. I don't like all those videos about what to text the guy and all of that because it's looking at the wrong place. Like if I just text him the right thing, I can get him to like me or, you know, if you text the guy, just text him without caring about the outcome. I would text the guy this, I don't want to date guys who ignore me. Goodbye. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> it just isn't fun. This video comes out of my own pain, you guys. I have done a lot of texting and years of longing over men who want nothing to do with me. And I was never like a text stalker, like horrible, but you could look at my phone and over the course of a week, there would be four texts from me, some of them long, with nothing from him. That's what it would look like. Ah. Uh, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And now I know that when I'm interested in a guy who's not responsive, I have to look inside myself. And when guys are interested in me, they text back, they come over. And there are guys who um, pretend to be interested. And the guys who pretend to be interested do a lot of texting wanting to have conversations over text that should be happening face to face and they don't want to come over they don't want to take me out for whatever reason i don't know if they're in a relationship or they're just not that interested or whatever whatever and um it's always interesting to me how a man um behaves differently when he is actually interested. It's like, hmm, this is so this is how they act when they're interested. And when they don't text back, it's not because they're busy or they lost their phone or you know, they're just too busy. It's cuz they just don't feel that they just don't feel what they need to feel. They're not in touch with their natural desire for you and that's just that's good to know because there's nothing worse than dating a guy who's really not that interested in you. And giving him a chance to find out how interested he is is really good. And that's why I don't like to have sex with guys on the first date. I want him to find out how interested he is in me as a person before I have sex with him. Because the if he's interested in me as a person, He's not going to blow me off after he has sex. He's not going to just blow me off. And he'll also be more attentive to me sexually and try harder to please me and enjoy more pleasing me. And a man can't be in touch with his natural interest in us without that getting together and then some space. For me, it works the same way, you know. I meet a guy and then I need some space to figure out in that space, do I miss him? How do I feel about him? And the problem only comes in when there's this like this urgency, like this obsession with, has he texted me? And that urgency and that obsession that you feel, like just really, really honor that feeling. That is such a great opportunity to heal this inner child pain and wound and to to comfort yourself and honor your emotions because once you do that you will be released from it and that's what happened to me in October after I figured out why I was obsessing over this guy I had to learn that I was abandoning myself when I was obsessing over him I was abandoning myself 
And that's when I started that inner bonding workbook by Dr. Margaret Paul, and that's helped me a lot. But I won't know if I'm really healed from this obsession thing until I meet the next guy I'm really into because I meet a guy I'm really into maybe once every two or three years. So it'll be interesting to see the next time I um, have that same like obsession thing going. Uh, so I don't know if I'm healed from it. I don't know because these romantic relationships bring up um, these kind of inner wounds, you know, and I'm sure I still have wounds that relationships bring up in a way that pets don't your cats and your dogs are not gonna give you the opportunity to um, heal those inner wounds because they won't trigger you in that same way oh yeah love can be hard love can be hard because um, there's this fine balance you know between um, being open to love uh, being loving filling my love up and that has to come from a spiritual source. And from there, having some boundaries that allow me to feel open. Because the moment I'm guarded, my whole day just goes worse, you know. So I'm always trying to be open without letting people take advantage of me. Being open with boundaries. And it gets a lot more challenging if there's a guy I really like because then I kind of um, can start projecting a fantasy onto him. And that's another thing not to do, ladies, is you like a guy, don't think about him at all. You have to have some mental focus and discipline here is to not start obsessing about him and thinking about him because that will take you down a rabbit hole of obsession is to just... When he pops in your mind, just flick it off. Stay present now. Stay present with yourself and stay present now. Because I noticed that for myself, when I start thinking about a guy and obsessing about a guy, it just, the obsession just grows where all I can think about is him. And then when is he texting me? When is he calling me? I made a decision now in any dating that I do, there will be no texting other than for scheduling a date. There will be no texting. And my thoughts will stay in the present moment. And when I catch myself thinking about a guy, I come back into the present moment and what I want to do now. Yeah, these topics are very tricky. Very, very tricky. And... Um, if you have any advice to leave for people about longing or, you know, why doesn't the guy text you back? Why doesn't the woman text you back? And you have to remember that just because we like someone doesn't mean they like us. We have to see if we, you know, get along together. And there are many women who don't text men back. Um, there are a lot of game players. So I think we have to have enough inner self-love and groundedness to be able to just kind of keep our sense of self while we weed through all the people and see if there's someone we want in our lives. All this advice has come out of my pain. And again, I don't know if I have all the final answers, but that's what I have to offer you for now. <laughs> Thanks for watching my video.